Kari Johanna. <laughs> Karibu sana mwesh. Mwesh mwa? Wow, Nairobi, I'm in the presence of greatness. Oh. In the presence of the witty Jalas. <laughs> and the legendary Jeff Koenange. Mm. Thank and you very much for having me, and guys. And it's hot in the studio, isn't it, it Mwesh mwa? It's literally <laughs> blazing in the studio. <laughs> Wow, yes, if you're system. listening from out there, I can tell you the mm. AC has broken down. <laughs> it's a system the here. Yeah. Studio. What the engineer? <laughs> engineer, hapa usiju wa maenda wa. It is blessing. Hot it is in. smoking. I'm telling you. <laughs> KJ VP mtuangu. Eh, ni aje jealous. Tuko poa maze title. Sisi awa, sisi awa. Title, I'm happy no, to see you. It's so a few things. Uh, it's a uh, checked, uh, checked shots. Monday. Monday. Oh. And Memo Sikupa. Jeff, Jeff thank you. Memo, Memo Sikupa. Yes. In fact, I was about to pull out my check shirt. So, <laughs> you're also in school with the Mwishime. Watch out. Ah, yes. Oh, wonderful. We're Gumbaru mates. Gumbaru mates. Yes. Go, go, go what now? Gumbaru, yeah. yani masomo ya waze. Oh, I go. Kusema <laughs> tunai pega paka da kema. Nini ni waze? All inspired by him. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, mm. So you, you, what is this, four days a week, five days a week? No, every single day. But, but you, you're taking your masters now. Well, um, I've actually, I'm actually done with my coursework. Mm-hmm. I was done with my coursework. I'm only now writing my, my thesis. thesis. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm What's it on? My paper. Mm-hmm. I'm writing on actually newspaper headlines. Oh. Yes. Um, and my hypothesis is that, uh, you know, at times newspaper headlines uh, do get to, to dictate what the national psyche is and at times to a negative effect. And that's what I'm writing on. Wow. I, li- I would love to read that and when you're done. This is on newspaper headlines. Can you imagine? Which is true. I mean, you look at any headline, KJ, mm-hmm. and you know, for the past several years, mm-hmm. any headline mm-hmm. dictates what the country, where the country is going. It, it and, shows and, the and, mood. And my question is, well, uh, what's dictating, what interests are dictating what shows up at the headlines mm-hmm. and what effect does it have on the national psyche? Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that there are many interests that run these headlines. Mm-hmm. We've heard of the phenomenon of headlines for sale mm-hmm. you've heard of uh, people making mm-hmm. big headlines just to sell the newspaper and also we, regional headlines we know also about mm-hmm. regional headlines mm-hmm. which is a is a new concept uh, we thought that uh, maybe it would be used positively uh, especially when we went into uh, devolved system of governance yes. but we know what uh, what it's being used for absolutely right yeah. there are people who pay money to have certain individuals on the front page headlines for sale headlines for sale yes Wow. And um, and we know the brown envelope concept in the mm. news in, in the in the news um, in the newsrooms. KJ, so on, yes. Well done. Congratulations on that, by Thank the way. Thank you very much. Well sir. done. Thank you. Hey. Yeah. So listen, are we heading towards a crisis, Moshimiwa? Because you know we, things are not looking good. Every time we take one step forward, now we we're talking ten. about two, yeah, two, three, even ten back. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Well, I believe we're already in a crisis. Uh, Jeff, it's only that it's a it's a slow crisis. We 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 are slowly sinking into this crisis, and it's going to take up an you know um, a really concerted effort from everyone. Everyone needs to see themselves as a stakeholder and start thinking about how we stop digging and get out of this hole. Um, Jeff, we cannot be in high octane politics from March 2013. We are going into the sixth year of high octane politics yeah. uh, something's got to give and we are seeing things giving uh, for example you know since the supreme court ruling mm. uh, we are told that the uh, nairobi securities exchange has suffered a blow to the tune of 130 billion kenya shillings a loss the transport sector is reporting a loss of close to 25 billion kenya shillings mm. since this ruling so the sooner we get out of um, of this election cycle the sooner we get back to life as normal. And what is it about us, KJ? Because Jaws and I were just talking uh, uh, in the last hour. Yesterday, Germany held an election. Amazing. Germany held an election. Amazing, amazing. And, no noise. And yes. there was a marathon at the same time. There was a marathon. But what is even more amazing mm. is that with all the technology we know <clears throat> Germany for, yes. the Bavarian technology, yes. you know, the, the Daimler-Benz Correct. technology, all the other technology you can think of, yeah. The election was manual. The whole thing was manual. Are we overcomplicating our our systems? Are we overcomplicating how we do things? Uh, you know, um, you can imagine German when Germany went into a manual election. Mm-hmm. Well, it's embedded in our constitution. We talk about wanting a very free, fair, simple, mm. uh, verifiable election. Yeah. I think we can also simplify our election and get out of uh, get it out of the way and get on to doing other business. But you know, yeah. it's so sad to see huh? this politics has become our religion. 
it's, it's our, our religion gospel. and it's our staple food. Yeah. But uh, well, uh, when when things start giving, we're going to realize that we cannot be politicking for for the rest of our lives. Mm. Uh, the the farmer needs to get back to farming. The child, the children needs to get to doing their exams, and the traders need to get to doing business. Yeah. Because if we don't do that. Uh, and, and get on with these uh, elections affairs continuously uh, we'll start seeing the effects of it and they will not be good so the latest is nasa has called for a sit-in or a sit-down or a demonstration <coughs> outside anniversary towers is that it on tuesday on tuesday and uh, well you know constitutionally uh, every kenyan has to pick it sure and in fact that's not even the big issue mm. uh, the big issue is how well it's going to be managed and this is uh, from both ends. Uh, you know, uh, if NASA goes to the streets, mm -hmm. it needs to be peaceful. It needs to be orderly. It needs to be organized. Um, on the other end, um, you know, use of force will be will be will be catastrophic. Yeah. Because if 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 the force is viewed to be, um, you know, extreme force, mm -hmm. you know that uh, that just going to precipitate chaos. And with chaos, we're in a very delicate situation where we have a timeline. You know, we, yeah. we, we've been ordered by the, the Supreme Court to yeah. hold an election within 60 days. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the most, um, it would be the most unfortunate thing to sink the country into chaos at this time. We have 30 days and 30 nights, KJ, till October 26. Are yes. we going to make this deadline? Are we going to make it? Oh, it gets to a point where now you become a believer. And start believing that you know uh, it has to happen mm. because the exact opposite of it uh, would be unthinkable. Yeah, it would yes. be catastrophic, like it you said. It would be catastrophic. I mean, look, uh, if the sixty days pass and yes. there's no election, yeah, we'll have a crisis. Well, um, we are we are working very hard at going into a crisis as a country. <laughs> um, if you ask me right now, yeah. um, every political player in this country, it doesn't matter whether you're Jubilee or NASA should be forcing IBC to just release a timetable. We want a timetable. We want to know how well prepared they are to get this done mm. um, in, in 30 days. So we need to know, are they going to have a new nomination of presidential candidates? Uh, do parties need to present new certificates of their nominees? Uh, at what point do they think they want to procure what so that they enable the election to happen. We need a timetable so that we see how doable it is in 30 days. Yeah. Yes. And yet, uh, NASA's calling for the removal of individuals like uh, the CEO of IBC, uh, Ezra Chiloba, and others. Yes. In this entire mix, I mean, what do what does one concentrate on? What does one? What are the priorities right now? You, you've got to understand that uh, that NASA has the right to demand anything mm. it's how we all react to it uh, think about it this way that IBC is a uh, is an independent body so it doesn't mean that they have to bend to every person's demand mm. I have demands too as KJ mm. it doesn't mean that uh, IBC needs to bend to to my demands the thing is if IBC is independent it's got to prove its independence you know what they say Jeff that uh, tiger does not shout about its tigritude you know, it just mm. it, the, the tiger is just a tiger. Mm. So if IBC is independent, it needs to just demonstrate its independence. Uh, go on and deliver an election. Now, demanding for individuals to resign. Mm. You know, what do you have against the individuals? Uh, we know what what got us into this is a ruling. The ruling was a two-part ruling. The ruling said that we are nullifying this election. Mm -hmm. It is null and void. And they brought in uh, the concept ab initio, meaning that everything from the beginning has been nullified. So it's like a presidential election never happened. The second part of the ruling was that IBC should conduct an election in 30 days. 60. And we waited in, in 60 days. Mm -hmm. And we waited for, for 21 days mm -hmm. to get the full ruling. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there, there was a school of thought that thought that there, were, there would be people incriminated personally mm -hmm. by the full ruling, mm -hmm. which did not happen. So on what grounds are you going to call for Chiloba's, uh, you know, uh, resignation or Chabukati's or whoever's resignation? Uh, well, the court hasn't pointed a finger at anyone. There is an independent office called the, the, the Director of Public Prosecutions. 
they, they can do their work and and if they, anyone is culpable you know they can be charged then but in the meantime the biggest business of the day as a country is to deliver an election yeah. we need an election to happen so that we can move on to doing other things speaking of moving on kj do you see the day when this country will move on an election will just be not an event or a process it'll just yeah. be a day and we're done oh we will get there we will get there we are you know even 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 what we, we are having is a process mm. in in you know into getting into some place what we need to do is define as a country uh what we think is 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 uh is, is, is bigger than all of us. Mm -hmm. Because when we have something that's bigger than all of us, then these other things become petty. Uh, the moment we have something that's bigger than me, KJ, as an individual, bigger than KJ as a tribe, bigger than KJ as a party, then we start having more common goals. But the moment we, we distill ourselves to the, to the finest, uh, or, or to not, not fine in a, in a positive way, but to the small and petty things, the more antagonistic a community we 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 build yeah. so there has to be something that's bigger than kj bigger than my community bigger than my religion bigger than where i come from mm -hmm. um and that's a country and even bigger than this country which is humanity i've got to be able to see someone fast as a human being mm -hmm. rather than what religion they they, they profess or which part of the country they come from, or which part of the political divide this guy sub 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 subscribe to. Absolutely. So um, it's um, it's uh, idealistic, it's uh, wishful thinking. It's a place we would want to be. Uh, now it's starting to take the steps towards that. Absolutely. Yeah. So and speaking of KJ, KJ the man, <laughs> KJ Mwashimiwa, This was your third time trying for Bunge. Yeah. This was uh, my third attempt. Third at time Kenya lucky. interview. Uh -huh. Uh, a journey we've walked through closely with uh, Jalas. <laughs> uh, he's been he's been here. But Jeff, you interviewed me uh, severally, uh, severally, mm. uh, long before <laughs> I even ran for 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 the first time. Yes. So yes, it's been it's been a well, ten year journey. And what's it like being in the twelfth bungi? And you know, I know you did the orientation, you did the opening day. Are you guys meeting yet? Are you uh, sitting yet? Oh, yes, uh, bungi was open, um, and. I'll share with you my maiden speech mm -hmm. because I did cover some of these things that you're asking in my mm -hmm. maiden speech. But I've got to say, first of all, it's an honor. You know, I, I grew up uh, looking into Bunge and in fact idealizing some of the people that were in Bunge right from when I was a very young person. At that time, I didn't even think that I would end up in politics. I knew my path was in the, in the arts mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I was happy there. But somehow, somehow, uh, life happened on me. You know, I didn't choose this life, it chose me. And I would say that it's a big honor uh, to be sitting in the 12th Parliament and most importantly, to have been sponsored by the people of the Great South to, to be their representative in the 12th House. Mm. Yes. Uh, just, just, just maybe a quick one. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> everybody always say that, you know what, KJ would walk in there as a guy who, who wants to make things happen, mm -hmm. make things change. Alafu kuna kitu pombe fulani, ama kuna kitu fulani, watu wanakunyo ama watu wanavota hapa na niabunge once. You get in there mm -hmm. and you get swallowed with, uh, mm -hmm. with, with, uh, my asthma. Not my Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, no. But last week you used it well. Uh, I used it well. <laughs> Very well. You just change and, uh, you just uh, close your eyes to the things that people used to tell you that you know you can go in there and make change. Mm. Uh, well, now you become one of them, mm -hmm. and you know when we talk about one of them, you know what we are talking about: pay rise left and right, mm -hmm. non-committal on the services that you pro uh, you promise to deliver. KJ just becomes unreachable. KJ just become another Kenyan politician. Mm -hmm. Is is it? Well, uh, Jalas, uh, the politicians that you see in Bunge. Um, I don't think anyone ever started out her career as a politician. Um, everyone went in there coming, having come from somewhere. Uh, some of the people are doctors, others are engineers, others are lawyers. We've got even Matatu people, uh, people coming from the Matatu industry getting into Bunge. I don't think there's anything called a care politician uh, or one of them. And at times it's very easy to point fingers. And I said this long before I even ran for office, to point fingers into Bunge and say, those guys. Uh, but what is it that those guys in Bunge are doing that the nurses of this country are not doing, that the, the doctors of this country are not doing, that the teachers of this country are not doing? Um, 
why 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 do we just segment this uh, small you know part of our community and point fingers um are, are doctors uh, living up to the oath that they take our nurses uh, doing what it is that they were called upon to do our teachers becoming the role models that we would want um, them to be for our students or is a kenyan politician just a small part of what we are as a country mm. wow mm. Mm, mm, it's deep. That is deep. Deep. Might be pointing fingers out there. Yes. And you yourself are to work, whatever you are called. You are also not even delivering to your oath. Imagine. Wow. Is it challenging so far, KJ? It's very challenging. Yeah. Mm. It's 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 very challenging, mm. and especially coming from my background. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you the kind of life we had with Jalas before I got into politics. Mm -hmm. The good thing about the arts. It cuts across. Yeah. Your constituency is Kenya. Mm. When you're an entertainer, when you're in the in the in the arts, when you're when you're when you're in the performing and visual arts, yeah. your constituency is Kenya. The day you declare mm. that you're running for office, mm. you become uh, you know, politics is partisan. You subscribe to a certain constituency mm. in this country. And it is not out of your own making. Uh, we've got a country, unfortunately, that's extremely divided along, um, you know, party lines, yeah. coalition lines. Yeah. And the moment you start running for office, you'll have to take a side. Mm. You'll have to run with one ticket yeah. or the other. Yeah. And the moment you do that, uh, you, you will be celebrated by one side and castigated yeah. by the other. Yeah. That's the biggest... Uh, transition that I saw. And in Bunge, when yes. they look at you, do they see you KJ, the comedian, or do they see... What, what do they see? It's Tell interesting. <laughs> it's interesting, Jeff. I was talking about it just yesterday. Mm. Um, and uh, I will tell you that uh, most of the... Even media yeah. will refer to KJ. You know, I, I saw the headlines mm. after I won the nominations mm. and after we won the election. The, the headlines were saying, former comedian mm. wins mm. the Goretti yeah, seat. Yes. And they, it doesn't matter what you did after that. You know, I was a comedian at 19. <laughs> I was a first year uh, student at Kenyatta University. Mm. I was 19, 20 years. Mm. And I've done so much since then. Yeah. Um, no one talks about uh, the professional career. Mm. No one talks about my service at some point in government. Mm. No one talks about anything else I've done after that. They remember us for the comedy. But nothing, is a good thing. there is nothing wrong sure, with sure. being referred as a comedian. Yes. And Jeff, I'll tell you here, um, and, and I'd want our listeners to know, mm. that you'd have to be so intelligent to act as foolish as Jalas does. <laughs> These guys are normally very intelligent people. These guys you call comedians. Yes. Um, and they've got truths they mm. want to share. Mm. Um, it's Oscar Wilde who says that, uh, you know, if you want to tell them the truth, make them laugh. That's Otherwise, true. they will kill you. Mm. These guys are out there delivering truths, but they're doing it comically. Yeah. And they're quite an intelligent lot, I can tell you, mm. having worked with, uh, with quite... Uh, a number of them, especially the finest in Kenya. Yes. I'll tell you, they're very intelligent. So, for me, it's not demeaning to be referred to as a former comedian. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, I just bring something else to the table. You know, as I said, the, in Bunga, people have taken different paths to get there. Yeah. There are people who are doctors, they are lawyers, they are engineers. Mm -hmm. Now, they are also performing and visual arts in yeah. Bunga. Yeah. Are you in any committees yet, uh, KJ? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. We, okay. haven't, we haven't started uh, oh, forming the committees okay. and we haven't started taking committee leadership. Uh, yeah. okay. yeah. Jalas, you're ridiculous. Yeah. Was that part of your inspiration? Any day, any time. Really? I look up to KJ. Would you watch them? Would but you... inspiration works two ways. Uh -huh. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, yes, we started out with ridiculous and we had a really good run. Yes. And thank you, Jeff, for the support. Through bro, the years, bro, man. It was Amazing. wicked. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. He these, took us international, Jalas. <laughs> oh, man. We guys, were on CNN. We were in places. These guys showing yeah. up as yeah. Daniel Arab Moy. Yes. yes. Those days. Yeah. Those days. Oh, man. How? They, they, they were great days. How? And now and Mama that, Lucy, God know, rest her soul. Yes. Uh, oh. Mama Taifa. Mama Taifa. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you. Yes. Inspiration works both ways. So mm -hmm. we did our run as uh, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then we opened up the door for other people to get in on Red Corner. Yes. And it's around when we were doing Red Corner that uh, Kina Jalas was starting mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. uh, at the National Theatre. Yes. And at times I wouldn't understand some of the things that they would present there. Right. But I would show up. Uh, my friend Maurice Ocheng uh, would make sure that I would go for the for the, the lure shows that uh, Jalas would put up. 
crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy talent. Right. You know, hilarious as they come. And how funny they were is that they transcended even language barrier. That's true. I would watch these guys on stage and laugh and you my would head laugh, off. Yes. And they're presenting in the lure at yes, that time. Yes. So inspiration is both ways. Uh, yes. Okay, so let me ask you this. You know, while on the subject of comedy and both of you, how come we haven't produced, and maybe it's a little unfair, but I'll ask anyway, how come we haven't produced a Trevor Noah or uh, that kid, the hot kid, what's his name? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Mm. How come we haven't produced that? We have so much mad talent. I would easily tell you. Well, um, to some extent, uh, to, to some extent, mm. uh, we went and confined ourselves to, to what? this space. To this space. That one is our mm. most unforgiving mm. uh, situation that we got ourselves into. You understand? Yeah. But as you can see now, things are opening up. Things are opening. Somebody like Chipukis is going now to host their Freema. You never know. Mm -hmm. uh, very soon. Uh, international breaks will come but having confined ourselves to this small space mm. of ours made us just be uh, uh, our own let's create something our own here League and even if, even if we left the country to go perform mm. somewhere we will still go out there targeting the Kenyan Kenyans. community <laughs> in the United States right. the Kenyan community yeah. in Dubai yeah. you understand yes. so we didn't open ourselves to the bigger market the mass market that is the whole world KJ um it's very true what Jalas is saying. And someone somewhere needs to start rethinking the creative economy in Kenya mm. as an economy. Um, and, and when you start think, rethinking the creative economy, you'll realize that everything is, is interconnected. Um, Jeff, I'll tell you a story about how uh, I ended up in activism. You know, uh, at the height of the ridiculous popularity, mm -hmm. we realized that out of every one Kenya shilling we were making, the pirate was making four shillings. Mm -hmm. Back then, there were tapes and DVDs. Yeah. And the pirate was making way more than the artists because at, time, at that time, we were the artists, the performers, the producers, and the directors. We were putting in the work and we were getting only a quarter of the earning mm -hmm. out of our own mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. And we decided to just face it head on. And I'll tell you, Jeff, that the more we went deeper into investigating these cartels in, um, in, in, in piracy, mm -hmm. we realized that it was interconnected with the drug cartel, the small arms cartel, so much so that the evildoers in this country don't care for whatever industry. So when you talk about piracy of product or service or even uh, the, the, the talent, mm -hmm they are interconnected at some point to the evil cartels in this country. Mm. Now, when we start rethinking the economic, uh, the, the, the creative economy, we'll have to face up some of these things. And some of it will have to be done by legislation. And that's why some of us will be having to carry an extra flag. Mm. And uh, when I'm talking about some of us, I'm talking about Moha of G Jicho Pevo. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Jaguar from Starehe. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about KJ from Dagoreti South. Mm. They will have to, have to carry an extra flag beyond the constituency that they represent demographically there is another demographic called the economic uh, or the creative uh, economy but jeff think about it this way an economy of 40 odd million mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. with over half of them living below the poverty line that means that even the person who is able to buy a product or a service uh, is reduced to probably two percent three percent of the population but the moment we start rethinking the creative economy we might not be looking for trevor noah from kenya we might be looking for the saudi soul of comedy mm -hmm. where we 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 are talking to an audience that is larger than the boundaries of kenya uh, and we can start with east africa the five east african community mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. let's think about why kidum is able to cut across the five uh, the, the five uh, countries. Mm -hmm. How is Diamond able to cross over to Kenya, to Uganda, to Burundi, to Rwanda? How, what is Saudi Soul doing right that they can be listened to by people who do not even understand Swahili? And then we can be able to answer the question why our comedy is not able to leave not only our country borders, but at times even city borders. Yeah. Uh, Jalas, mm. you know comedians who That's can't true. perform out of Nairobi. <laughs> Kabeza. They would, you know, you they take freeze. them to a show in Kakuma <laughs> camp to perform. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and they, they freeze. They freeze. 
in front of the audience. Oh, yes. yes. That's just, you know, you're right. You're right. There's so many dynamics, but uh, you have to think big. You have to think. You have to think outside this box yeah. and not just pleasing your little constituency. See, oh, that's really, really true. Yeah. But like you said, uh, they're branching out. Mm -hmm. We're slowly branching out. Maybe we will get that Trev Trevor Noah. Maybe we'll get that Kevin Hart mm -hmm. down the line. Wow. Right? And it's also a big inspiration that you guys, the young people now, are coming into politics mm. and uh, starting to make the decisions and taking, make uh, things open up for the young, for the young out there. Sijui kama wewe kama KJ, ukiwa pale ndani, kama kijana, vijanu naeza wambiaje, ukuinje. Uh, ya kwanza jalas, uh, minta on up. Niseme, misi kwa bracket ya youth tena. Yeah, najua. Uh, nilisha, nilisha vuka bracket KJ, how old are you? I'm now 39, going on 40. I'll be 40 in January. Hujafika fourth floor. Bado, bado si jengia fourth floor. Bado, bado, bado si jengia fourth floor, ni kwa third floor, yeah. lakini bado nanoka, nanoka po fourth floor. Yeah. So naambia vijana kwanza, mi siku kwa youth bracket. Wee ni kijana tu. Wee si kijana tu. Lakini kuna vitu kathani mesoma. Yes, because uh, for the better part of my adult life, mm. I've actually been in the youth movement in this country. Mm. You remember from the days of Vijana yeah, Tukutuke, to okay. youth agenda. Mm. I'd been propagating for youth issues. Uh, two things I'd like to say to the young people in this country who are listening to Hot 96 today, which is a youth station. Two things. Mm. One, youth is a transitional stage. Become a pregnancy. Leo pregnant, kesho uko pregnant. So weka kijana, we jua, leo we ni kijana. Kesho utakuwa kijana. You only one. Mm. The second thing is kila mtu anatuambia fanyi kitu juana budget. Juana ana, ana, ana capital. Na mina takani ambio vijana hivi. Hakuna shortage ya do. Kukotuna shortage ya idea ya kupata do. It doesn't, you don't need great money to get a great idea. Mm -hmm. But with a great idea, you can make great money. Na kani personal example, mina eza sema initial capital yangu ilikuwa 50 bob nilikuwa na idea kali and all i needed to do was present it somewhere initial capital yangu ilikuwa 50 bob kwenda show yangu ya kwanza show yangu ya kwanza ilikuwa talent search i showed up at that talent search and est it vibaya sana show ya kwanza ya ridiculous ilikuwa nilikuwa kijana mmoja nilikuwa nimetoka kampo kwanza nilikuwa yani part of the journey nili walk mgu Alafu ni kachukua ka, ka, ka buff light ka 50 bob. Ni kashua pale kwa talent search. Na niliesile show ile design. Yani iyo show ndi ili nipatia zile shows ilifuata. Later on we were able to team up with Walter and Tony. And create this thing. That started out uh, being hired for 500 shillings a guy. Our first earning was uh, you know less than 2000 shillings for three guys. But I can tell you in six months. Our earning had risen to 30,000 Kenya shillings back then, then to 45,000 Kenya shillings. And you remember at the height of it, Ridiculous was the best paid performing group in East Africa. There are times we would show up uh, at a show for half a million Kenya shillings and the other issues were taken on by the client. So I'm saying that to the young people, how need do, kufanya ile kitu need kudu, una need idea. So, if you have a great idea, you can make great money. But you don't need great money to effect out a, a great idea. Fantastic. Yeah. We're going to take a break, KJ. Come back. Talk about what is it like uh, being this new crop of leaders. The Jaguars, the Mo Mohajicho Pevus. The Babus. The Babu. We know who just called the president something the other day. Oh, goodness yeah. gracious. It was right? yesterday and it was in the Goretti district. Nuka <laughs> Kwenu. I had to tonge iyo Tuki Rudy Maria Pili Ukunande It's the Hot Breakfast With Jeff and Jelano